Hello there, this is Patricia from Pinky's World. Today I'm making a few treats for um, a few parcels that I have to send out at the end of the month. And this wee box is really simple, quick and easy. It holds two fudge bars, as you can see, perfect wee size for it. But it's just quick and easy and it just uses uh, any of your scraps left that you can, you know, wee strips of six by six inch paper it's perfect for these. You only need a piece of card measures five inches by six and three quarters. And to add a wee bit of extra texture, I have scored it just to follow the plaid paper. I've just done a few, I'm sure you can see that, can you? So it's up to yourself whether you do that or you can stamp over your thing. This was just quick and easy. When you have a few of them to make, you don't want them hanging about too much. So we will start off by using a um, or showing you what I'm using. That's where I've cut out of the plain black card, uh, the lovely gathered leaves days. Uh, I've used this one. So it's just perfect and it comes out all embossed and everything. It's really, really nice. And for the a treat so sweet, I've taken it from the banner year, which is a great wee set. So let's get started. It's very quick, very easy. So you're gonna need your piece of card. Uh, it's just Wisp of White. It's not even heavy card. It's just the ordinary Wisp of White. You need a strip, hopefully two inches, but it doesn't really matter. So long as it's round about two inches, maybe one three quarters you would even get away with, and six inch wide. So just off cuts that you've used from your card. A wee strip for your sentiment and your card, of course. So we're going to start doing a wee bit of scoring. So on the five inch side, we're going to score it at half an inch. Two and a quarter, two and three quarters, and four and a half. And just spin it round and score it at three quarters of an inch, one and a quarter, five and three quarters, and six and a quarter. So the one with the three quarters of an inch is going to be the top end of your box for opening and closing. So I'm going to show you where I'm going to use the smaller uh, scoreboard that I have to show you how I did the, the wee scoring to get your plaid going. So I haven't done it along the edges, top and bottom. I've just, um, just right up the middle and along the two sides. So rather than trying to break it up, just do it all. So you're simply going to go, um, forget about those two and go along here and just start. You can go every second mark or every first mark, every mark, which I have done here. So we'll maybe do this one every second and we'll see which one you prefer. So we're just going right down, counting two each time and score it right to the bottom of this. Mightn't be as nice or as textured. Plus, you could also just run it through a nice embossing folder if you fancied. But this is a quick and cheap way of doing it if you want to add texture. And just keep going right down to <clears throat> excuse me, the last wee bit. We're just going to run out. This is only a wee short go, so just made it. So again, turn it around this side, and you're going to start. Uh, two in and from here down. And we're going to go back in and do, <coughs> excuse me, our embossing lines. It's a wee bit. If we actually fold that up out of our way, we could nearly push that up and maybe get it done. Would feel it better, if you know what I mean. No, we're not going to. So if we're just sort of eyeballing it and you'll know if you've hit the right one or not. And you can see it's given a much bigger check. So just continue on until you've that whole area filled. So you should be left with a nice pattern right across the centre. You can go back in and reinforce those lines if they've been taken out with your embossing. So we're just going to do our folds now. So this is the time if you'll see if there's anything that isn't showing up properly, you can go back in and just run in your embossing board. Just do all those lines, just half inch here, over to that one, and 
that one in the center can be a bit tricky just remember it's only half an inch wide so that's all you'll need and again another half inch at the end here so we'll do some cutting away so we can cut this wee edge off here so you want to keep this tab here just cut it down a bit And then we can cut these two red. I'll just mark it with my pen and then you'll, you'll know. So we don't need that or that or that. We are keeping this. This is going to be your closure. And we can take both those away. We're keeping that one. Down at the bottom, we we'll want to get rid of that. Keep that. Get rid of these two again. And this one. And again, keep this for your bottom closure. And take those two out. So that keeps you fairly simple if you follow that, if you can see it. So we'll just cut over. So I'm just going to keep cutting those. You do the same and I'll show you the finished piece. So you should be left with this shape. This is your top where the chocolate's going to go in. This is going to be sealed at the bottom. So before we do that, we'll want to add our paper. And the best way I found to do that, to keep it nice and tucked in and all, is to put it on before you make up your box, but do it carefully. You're going to need to add some liquid glue, and preferably this one, I think. It doesn't dry too quick, so it gives you time to work with it. And just lay your um, paper, and you'll know then where to stop with your glue. So just add it in. Either side of that paper would be lovely. This is just another wee cut off from a card I've made. So don't throw out your scraps. So line that up in the center. Center ish, like. Press it down gently, but start at this side, keeping that lined up there so it's not over the edge. And do your fold and smooth it as you go along to the next fold. You want to keep it up close to that edge so that gives you time to do that. Just keep checking it right along to the last edge and let it get its extra from this side rather than that side so that when you close that box all up we're going to cut this bit off it's going to be nicely sealed all in nice clean edges on it so you've got your edge give it a good wee press that everything's taken now and just double check there's nothing too tight and it's all going nice and straight and then we're just going to trim this off. You can, can tuck it in if you want. I'm not going to bother. Now, I'm going to have that one going that way. Where's my front? The one with the longest is for tucking in, so we'll want that to go that way then, so that it looks nice and neat on the front. So now we can glue this to this. I'm going to use the better glue for this. And that's it. So we want to glue the bottom, which is this one. And the only place we're going to put glue is actually on those two wee bits there. And that should hold that in place without making everything sticky for you. So just fold that and slip that in. If you put your bars in at this stage, um, 
that'll give you something to push down on to make sure that's sealed. Close that and that should tuck in nicely. So you just want to decorate it now and that's I have used the lovely wee leaf and I'm just going to stick it down a uh, flat sort of just here so it's sitting up like a wee bit you can pull your leaves up just to give it a wee 3d look so it's not totally flat so just a wee smear in the center you could curl that up before you stick it down if you want it so you just need your wee scrap now and the stamp and your memento Good income, my memento is well used. Just line it up. Oops. And I'm just going to trim that off with my scissors. Actually thought that carrot was straight, but it's not when you see it. And to um, blacken the edges down, I just dipped it in the stamp or the ink pad. Oops. And that gives it a nice black edge. And your fingers if you're not careful. So I'm just going to pop some wee tiny, tiny um, 3D foam. It's only one millimeter thick. You can see one right over the back. Like an Egypt. I don't want it raised up too much as this is going on the post. So hopefully I'm covered in the sink now. You could add a bit of a wee tiny um, Becker's twine bow or something like that if you wanted to decorate it up, but I think it works well the way it is. And just sort of park that in the middle. And there you have it. And you can see the difference. I think actually like the closer texture. So maybe bear that in mind when you're making it, if you're going for it. So that's me. That's the whole thing done using your scraps and a bit of Wisp of White and one stamp set. So hope you have a wee go and maybe you'll be one of the ones receiving these in the post. Catch you all again next week. Bye.